Kung 150 ang tanong sa civil service exam and kailangan mo makakuha ng 18 na sa rating mo, does that mean you can only make 30 mistakes? Do you need to get 120 questions right? That's what we're going to talk about today. Hi there! Thank you for checking out my channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. This video is part of my series ng CSE Q&A in which I try to answer the questions that most of you have when it comes to the civil service exam. Now, this is a question na lagi kong nakakaharap. Uh, hindi lang pag uh, panahon ng review, pero even after na lumabas yung mga ratings. And that is yung kung paano ba makuha yung computation ng rating when it comes to the civil service exam. Does that mean kung 80% ang kailangan kong makuha na score, ay 80% dapat ng 150 questions ay dapat kong makuha ng tama. Uh, now, the answer to that quite simply is no. Kasi yung 80 na rating is different from getting 80% of the actual questions. I don't believe na 80% talaga, as in, uh, yun talaga yung literal na computation ng grades. And a good proof of that would be yung mga scores kahit nung mga top-notchers. For example, nung August 2017, ang top-notcher doon sa exam na yun got a score of 90.87 sa rating niya. Now, if you multiply, and forgive me for doing some math, but th this really is a necessity for this, no? Kung 90.87 ang rating niya, and percentage talaga ang basis, if you multiply 90.87 sa 150, you would actually get a decimal number. That would be around 136 and some change. Now, bakit siya proof na hindi percentage basis yung rating kasi kung percentage basis ang rating hindi pwede na ganun kadikit-dikit yung mga scores pagdating sa rating uh, kahit sa akin when i took the the civil service exam yung scores ko din yung score ko at yung scores ng mga people who took the test with me hindi din naman ganun ka magkalayo yung uh, margin ng mga rating namin which doesn't necessarily mean na uh, alam niyo yun one is to one yung bilang sa mga questions na ito so, definitely, may computation yan silang ginagawa. Hindi rin totoo na uh, i-average mo lahat ng mga scores na nakuha mo sa lahat ng mga subjects or topics. Kasi, like I said, I took, uh, I took the exam, I only got 79 point something sa aking uh, general information section. If pareho ang weight ng bawat isang section, then that grade would also drag my score down. Now, ano ba talaga yung tamang computation ng rating? Quite simply, the answer is, I don't know. And the reason why I'm telling you guys na hindi ko alam is maliban sa hindi ko talaga alam, uh, yun ang number one reason. The second reason is kasi I don't think it's going to be helpful for you. Instead of thinking kung ilang question ba yung pwede mong magkuha ng mali, or kung uh, ililista mo ninyo yung number of percentage ng mga questions na, uh, na nagawa nyo na ng tama or sure kayong tama sa exam, just try to focus on which question is at hand. Ngayon, bakit ko to sinasabi? Kasi wala talagang may alam kung ano talaga yung rating, maliban sa Civil Service Commission or the people who actually make these ratings. And ang um, theory ko, and again, this is just a theory, no, is that uh, may mga nangyayaring curving ng grades pagdating sa Civil Service exam. And how do I know that? Kasi again nga, inconsistent naman yung mga percentage. Um, and uh, if you're a teacher, or at least you know one, you can ask them about this. There is a way for teachers to curve the grades of the students, lalo na kung kaunti lang ang pumasa, or kung masyada namang malayo yung score nung top one doon sa bottom na uh, na score. Pag ganun kasi yung mga cases, okay, following the rules din ng statistics and ng kung gaano ka magiging relevant or valid yung isang exam, there are computations that we make for that. But let's not go into that. Kasi ang sa akin, ang belief ko is that if you go and uh, look for yung ilan ba yung dapat mong maging tamang sagot, ilan ba yung pwede mong imali, mali na yung, agad yung mindset natin when we're taking the exam. Mas ganda na mag-focus kayo on learning as much as you could para pagdating sa exam, ready kayo. Ayoko kasi mangyari sa inyo yung nangyayari na sa mga ibang tao or maybe sa inyo rin if you already took the exam. Some people kasi would say na, okay, kung 80% ang kailangan na makuha na score, ibig sabihin na 120 yung items na kailangan kong maging tama. 30 questions lang yung kailangan kong makuha na mali. If you have that mindset when you're entering the exam, what you would do, whether consciously or unconsciously, is that habang nagsasagot kayo ng exam, meron kang parang mental counter kung ilan na yung nakuha mong tama or ilan na yung nakuha mong mali. And you can like this video if you agree, baka naranasan yun na rin yun. Paano kung yung mga first query, first three questions sa exam ay sadyang mahihirap? Okay, paano kung mga quadratic equations siya or something like that na hindi mo masyadong, hindi ka masyadong familiar with? 
what would happen would be instead of focusing on the question that you're trying to answer right now, you're going to think na parang okay, mali na agad ako ng isa, mali na ako ng dalawa, ng tatlo. And then yung negative na cloud na yon ng disappointment sa sarili mo would also bleed through the rest of the exam. Mahahawa yung uh, yung pagsagot mo sa entire exam dahil sa negativity na yun. Dahil nagbibilang ka ng mga questions that you can get wrong. I've even had a uh, student tell me before na, kasi coach, pag naka 20 na ako na sigurado kong maling sagot, ginagawa ko, nagkukwit na lang ako sa exam, nagsastop na lang ako, or wala na yung puso ko doon kasi feeling ko, imposible na rin naman akong pumasa. Now, ayokong ma-discourage kayo when it comes to that. What I would say would be this, if you get, for example, sa mga practice test or sa mga uh, quizzes that I post, if you get maybe 60% of the questions right, maganda na yung percentage na yun. Kahit itanong nyo sa mga passers na from before, hindi naman ibig sabihin na pumasa sila and nakuha nila lahat ng mga tanong doon sa exam nila. They will also tell you na nanghula din sila sa ibang items or that they just used some of the techniques na, ginaga, na tinuro ko, tinuturo ko sa live review events kung paano ka manghuhula better pagdating sa exam. Those are things na darating talaga kasi imposible na alam mo lahat ng mga lalabas sa exam. So instead of thinking kung paano ba i-compute yung grade, uh, ano ba yung mga pwede kong magkuhang mali, ilan ba yung pwede kong mali, mas mabigat ba ang uh, ang score sa isang item over one item, what I would suggest would be just focus on learning as much as you could for as long as you could kasi meron pa naman tayong oras before the exam. That way, uh, positive kayo when you enter the exam, you're there to just do your best instead of calculating kung, alam nyo yun, may hope pa ba or wala, pa, wala na bang hope. Basta pagdating sa exam, just focus on whatever question is right in front of you. That's kind of my advice and that's also my answer dito sa sikat na sikat na tanong na ito, which is paano i-compute yung score. Uh, the rating really doesn't matter naman that much. Uh, well, unless nag-aim kayo na maging top-notcher. But even so, I don't uh, suggest that you do that kasi you would just add a lot of pressure sa inyong sarili. Just focus on learning and improving. Yun yung naman yung goal natin. Okay? Kasi yung rating naman, actually, wala pa akong nabalitaan na, na company or na uh, government agency na nare-require na ilagay kung ilan yung rating at kung nakailang take kayo. So, yun ang maganda sa civil service exam is just really pass or fail. Pwede nyo namang piliin kung ipapakita ninyo yung certificate ninyo na may grade uh, sa iba or hindi. So, yun lang yung uh, ipapabaan ko sa inyo ngayon. I hope na kahit pa paano na-clarify yung mga bagay-bagay sa inyo. And, uh, huwag kayong masyadong kabahan when it comes to the rating. It really doesn't matter. What matters is that you made it. Okay? So, ang focus natin really is maging mas madali itong next exam for you guys. So, mga topics na napahirap kayo noon, if you already took the exam, try to recall those and try to focus on those para pagdating sa bagong exam, ready na kayo to face those. Alright? So, that's my uh, two cents on that. Sana na enlighten kayo kahit pa paano na encourage kayo. And as always, if you want to reach out to me directly, you can go ahead and go to www.facebook.com slash teamlaika to get one of the reviews that I made or maybe attend one of the upcoming live review events. I would also love for you to like this video, share this. Kung meron kayo mga friends na uh, hindi na masyadong makatulog, kakaisip kung ilan yung 30 items or kung saan saan yung 30 items sa pwede nilang magawang mali, uh, you can go ahead and share this to them para kahit pa paano mabawasan yung stress. Kasi alam ninyo, ang unang-unang problema when it comes to recalling information pagdating sa actual test is stress. The more nervous you are, the more, the more uh, stressed you are, it's harder for you to recall information. So, just focus on learning, learning more, and again, kaya nga, ang tagline natin is never stop learning because that's what I'm encouraging you to do. Thank you guys for watching. Aja Aja, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell icon para wala kayong mamiss kasi there are more of these videos coming up. And I also make a new free video lesson every week. Thank you guys. God bless. I'll see you in my next video and bye for now.